reading, and this is a weekly practice that we do together here at Beacon Church to consider and declare together the scriptural truths that unite us as believers in Jesus Christ and followers of him. Uh, Last week, our question was, who is the Redeemer? Over the last while in our responsive reading series, we've considered scripture that shows us that we are all sinners. We fall far short of complete obedience to God's perfect and real moral law. We've considered Old Testament scripture prophesying a redeemer who would save God's people from their sin by paying the penalty for that sin. And we saw last week that the prophesied redeemer is Jesus Christ, the son of God. Uh, Thank you to Adam, who's not here, for leading us in that responsive reading. And this week, our question is, what sort of redeemer is needed to bring us back to God? So if last week's question was focused on the identity of the redeemer, uh, this week, the focus of the question is the nature of the redeemer, Jesus Christ. In Genesis 3, the redeemer is promised after the fall of man. The curse on the serpent in verse 15 says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. In this verse, a redeemer is promised, uh, one who would come and crush the head of the serpent who deceived uh, Eve and, uh, by extension, Adam into their uh, sin, the original sin that affects us all and place the whole earth and our bodies under a curse. And, uh, and, and the offspring that's promised here is identified as an offspring of the woman, somebody who would be born from the woman. So this would be a human somebody who's born from a woman. We think of that, we know that is a human. Uh, And Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, Daniel writes, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. If you were a good scholar of the Old Testament and you were reading this prophecy of Daniel um, fresh off the press as it came out and you would read this, you would know when you get to the point where somebody like a son of man, one that looks like a human you see is presented before God, you know what comes next, right? Right? A human that sees God and is presented before him should die instantly. Uh, God tells Moses in Exodus 33, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. Uh, Like when Uzzah touched the ark, he died instantly. But that's not what happens in Daniel's prophecy. Daniel sees this one, this one like a son of man, a, a human figure being presented to God, and rather than dying... In his vision, Daniel sees the one like a son of man being given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages would serve him and says it's an everlasting kingdom which shall not be destroyed. Um, If Daniel weren't God's prophet speaking God's own word to us and we read this, we might think this was blasphemy. There must be more than meets the eye to this one like a son of man, this human-like figure in Daniel's prophecy. When we consider Isaiah 9, verse 6, we see the answer. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. How can this be? A child is born, and listen to the titles, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. How can a human born to a woman, a son that has been given, have these titles? Well, Daniel saw one like a human standing before God, not dying, but being given a kingdom, Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that one, uh, a child would be born who would be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father. And when you see these pieces, you can put it together. This one, this prophesied Redeemer, must be man and God. 
When Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, he says, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power. You would know if you put the pieces together. This is the one from Daniel's prophecy. This one, like a Son of Man, is also God. He's, uh, he's the one that Isaiah prophesied to us, born to us. He is called Mighty God. I invite you to stand and join with me in responding to this question after I read it. What sort of redeemer is needed to bring us back to God? One who is truly human and also truly God. Let's pray. Lord, just as one trespass led to condemnation for all, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for us. The act of Jesus Christ, the redeemer, his obedience unto death. We praise you today for intervening in our hopelessness. Our guilt was greater than any of us could bear. But Lord Jesus, you came as a man to represent us, fully human, but with the capacity to bear the sin of the world because you are also fully God. I pray, Lord, that the preaching of your word this morning, um, that your spirit would open our hearts and our minds to hear your voice. Uh, may your spirit silence the natural forces that work within our flesh, pride, shame, selfishness, and distractions that make us attentive to hear your voice. Amen. We're going to take a five-